Life is full of many opportunities You just need a touch of life today. Let's start with the importance of finance. I don't think I need to do any sermon on the importance of finance in school management. How do you acquire the building? Whether you want to rent or you want to build. How do you acquire the other things? that will make you to be able to deliver on your objectives. How will you be able to pay the school? You want to pay the teachers? You want to pay other workers? You need finance. But ladies and gentlemen, if there is one thing that is giving administrators high blood pressure today, this is the issue of what? Finance, especially for the group I call on aided schools. We have government schools, we have mission schools that have been aided one way or the other. But there are many private schools that are unaided. And therefore they have to raise their own finances to be able to achieve the objective set for themselves. So the importance is not very The importance is not something that we have to be looking for. It's quite clear that without finance, you can't move anywhere. I know there are other areas we are going to talk about, but for the next few minutes before us, we are going to look at how we will manage our financial resources. What is financial management? Financial management is planning, organizing and controlling the financial resources of your school. Let me just be specific. So that you'll be able to enjoy the management of the school and be able to achieve the objectives you have set for yourself. Look at those three words. Planning, organizing, and what? And control. I know quite a lot of us know how to organize, but many of us do not plan. And some of us do not even control. But in financial management, those three things are present. And I want you to, let's go for the importance of finance, let's go to the next one. This is where I am now. The essence of financial management is to ensure that you achieve your objective at the end of it. Looking at the financial resources that are at your disposal. So I will quickly go to the next slide and show you what financial management entails. When we talk about financial management because of the time that we have, there are things you need to do to know that you are properly managing your finances. The first thing is that you do what you call need analysis. Need analysis. And I'm going to talk more about that. From your need analysis, you identify sources of finance. How do I raise finance for this school? After that, you are going to prepare budget. Then you monitor the budget. You maintain records and finally you do what we call regular audits. And I'm going to take them one by one. Please give me the next slide. Okay. When we talk about need analysis, there are three things we are going to do. The first thing is what we call initiation. In initiation, what you are saying is this. What are the issues that I'm facing? What are the limiting factors? Why is it that I have not grown the way I wanted to grow when I started this school? What are the issues I'm having? You need to settle down and look at your limiting factors. Those things that are impeding the progress of the school. It may be different from my own school. I might say, listen, 
Children are not coming just because I don't have a permanent site. They believe this is a temporary site. I cannot even do much because this is just three or four flats rented and it's not something that I can amend and make it to work like a school. That may be your limiting factor. Another limiting factor can be there and say, listen, I'm not been able to embrace technology. What is happening in the educational sector now is different from just taking a uh, blackboard and what? And talk. It's more than that. You have to look at the limiting factor. From there, you do what you call data collection. You settle down, do data collection. And I use two, two acronyms here. There's what you call test analysis. You have to look at your political environment. You have to look at your economic environment. You have to look at your social environment. You have to look at your technological environment. Listen, God at those days we just say, I've taught for three and thirty years. Let me go and start a school. What is politics saying? What is the economy of your area saying? The environment where you are. What is the social environment saying? What is technology saying? I'm going to say more maybe when you ask questions. But we need to put all this together. Sometimes you need to get an advisor that can do some of these things for you. Now, let me tell you, don't know those days when we just go and rent one small building and put people there, put people there, and expect them to be coming. The next street, you have another one. Tooth. You see the teachers? You cannot move from to them at all. And before you know it, even the little you have, they will take them for you. You have to look at the environment. The other thing I have to do is what we call SWOT analysis. S W O T. Some of you know it. The first one is your strength. What are your strengths today as a school? Yes, I know the curriculum. I have been teaching for years. That's your strength. I have good teachers. Yes, I have a very good structure that I can be proud of. Look at all those your strengths. Put them aside. Leave them and put them somewhere. Then you look at your weaknesses. What are your weaknesses today? Yes. I am not technologically advanced in this school. I went to one school, I saw what they are doing there. So you look at that say weakness. I must attack this weakness. My teachers are not doing well. It's one thing to say, I'm going to pay them 20,000 naira per month. And a teacher is being paid 60,000 naira somewhere else. You can compare yourself and see what you are going to get out of it. What are your weaknesses? You also have to see what we call the opportunities in the SWOT analysis, the opportunities that abide. Are we there? Now, don't go next place. You look at the SWOT analysis. What are the opportunities that exist? Don't just jump into it. The opportunities are there. If I do this, I can get this. How many of you have ever sat down to look at the opportunities around you? If you don't do it, you can't get to where you are going. Then the last thing is there are the threats. The threats, you have to see that. Part of the threat can be competition. Where are the schools around? What are they doing? In those days, I can just set up a school. But today, there are many competitors. And parents move from one end to another. They can come to you, they want to make inquiries. But as they are making inquiries with you, they are also going where? Elsewhere. So you have to look at the trends. What can happen in this area, but we don't have that time. Then at the end of it, you come up with what you call the final product. This is your need assessment, need analysis. This is what I need to do. You have to come with a list of your needs. Don't just say that I went to one school. Uh, coming for Corona is here. You go to Corona. She will tell you, my children went to Corona. And uh, I'm a young man, I'm just in my city. And imagine if, as long as I am, my children went to Corona. So they've been there many years. 
and they've gone through all this. If they are coming, how do I compete with such a school? All these are things you have to take care of in your need analysis. Can we go to the next one? Then, having known your needs, the next thing to look at your what? Sources of what? Finance. Some people believe so much in God. And I believe in God. Let me tell you, I'm a victim in the church. Some of us, they say, God will provide. But God has given us what? Intellect. We have to sit down and say, who are, what are the sources of finance? And I will use the opportunity to take you through some of the sources of finance. I'm not talking from theory. My wife has a school, I'm the chairman of that school. And we have been able to practice some of these things. So we are not just reading books and say, let me go and simulate it to you. Now, there are various sources of finance. I'm going to take them one by one. We will take it within the few minutes that we have. The first thing is what? Tuition. We are going to talk about tuition. That's the main one for private schools. And after that, we have income from extraordinary activities. Then we have, um, sorry, this is not a Extracurricular activities. Then we are going to take them one by one. Then you can have levies from approved by PTA. Let's take them one by one and then we discuss. Can you give me the next one? Tuition. In the case of tuition, this is always the main source of income for any school. This is the price that the parents are paying for whatever you are giving their children. Tuition is the most thing that you have to first of all determine. Let me tell you, every other source of finance is important. But none is as important as what? Tuition. If you get it right, you are going to fly. If you miss it, you are going to be in trouble. Tuition is not something that you just sit down and say, this school is starting this, even in my area. Therefore, I must start the same thing. Or let me go down so that I can, if I try something lower, I can attract you will be surprised you will not get enough students. Those ones that are even talking better, they will get more students. There was a time when we started the school and invited a friend. And the friend brought, asked the wife to go and check. The first thing was, how much are you going to charge? The lecture you were there. And uh, he was told, the following day, the children registered in another school. He said, it was too cheap. We couldn't see how we are going to disseminate anything good with the amount we are charging. You may say, I want to charge something that's affordable. It's okay. But the next thing is, is it attractive? Is it something that can draw parents? And tuition is not something that you just sit down and say, this is what I will charge. I wrote so many things. I believe that they will make this available for you. Now, this is the charge per student based on what you are giving out. Let me tell you, one problem with tuition is collection. Am I right? One problem with tuition is collection. A lot of them can come in. I remember when my children were going to school in those days. Even let me go back a little. There was a time when you had to go to school, I was in school really, and I won't mention the school here, but you have to go with your pregnancy to register the child. Those of us that are you know, go to that school, that could be a school there in the heart of school really. But if you don't register, when you are pregnant, by the time you deliver, the school is already what? Filled up. Today, you don't need to register pregnancy. There are many schools. But again, there are different levels. You have to know which level you belong to. How do you look at your tuition? If you do not charge the correct tuition, you are going to run into a problem. 
because you will not be able to meet your what? Expenses. And when you are not able to meet expenses, there is no way you can make any progress. If you overcharge, you are going to be in trouble. Because especially with the type of economy that we are going through now, people will tell you, yes, you are good, but you are not affordable. So how then do we make reflect? How do we balance the situation? Maybe when we are having interactive sessions, we are going to discuss more. Let me tell you and warn you, there are some parents, they move from one school to another. They will tell you, listen, we have, we have moved to this area, and your school, we had so much about your school, but again, we have just moved, we have just rented this area, we have this uh, property, you will give us some time. Just give us one month. With that, you bring them in, you are happy. They stay there the first time, the second time. By the time it's his third time, he said, I, my husband got a contract. He should go to the page in the next one month. Please, I can even give you positive checks. By the time they do three times with you, what they do? They go to another school. And then you start running after them. But because they are not working. There are some schools that will say, within the first two weeks, if you do not pay your fees, then you leave the school. But again, I don't know how many of them have been able to do it successfully. Unless you are one of those brands. Because by the time you ask many out of your class to leave the school, then you have a problem as a teacher. How do they catch up? So, tuition is a key, but you have to be very, very careful the way you handle it. I will leave tuition until the time we have questions. But please, you need to sit down and say, what are my expenses in this school? Where am I? And what is it that can make me get there? Then again, ask yourself, for the tuition I want to charge, am I really a disability? What parents will see for this amount they are parting with? Another way of making money or another source of finance in school is from extracurricular activities. Extracurricular activities. Let me warn before I say this. There are many schools that have extracurricular activities just because they want to make money. That is dangerous. The extracurricular activity is to develop the total child. If you go after extracurricular activity because you want to make money, eventually people will leave the school. You have to be careful. Now, what do I mean by extracurricular activities? Something like clubs, swimming, ballet, uh, football, language, and so many music class. Now, these classes are not expected to be taken by your normal class teachers. There are some schools that are trying to make money from extracurricular activities, and therefore they will also ask the teachers to be doing it as part of the work. Ask the work and pay your It is not the norm. You are expected to get experts. If you have one of the teachers being an expert in one area, you can pay that teacher specially for that extracurricular activity. For example, we may have a class teacher who is also good in soccer. He can be doing this uh, soccer club or football club. The same thing on swimming, but you need the experts. And what you need to do is this. You talk to the expert. How much will you charge per child? Then you, as a school, how much can you talk on it? What is the margin you can add to it? And from there, you now pass the other thing to the parents. Oftentimes, in PTA, you bring some of these experts to come and talk to the parents so that they can ensure that at least they know what their parents, and so what their children are, how to do. Am I getting it? Now, let me also warn here. Because most 
of the parents and if not all, they pay this extra curricular activities finance with your tuition. Some of you just get the money together. Isn't it? Everything is school fees. And before you know it, these experts are not being paid. Or if they are going to be paid at all, they will have to be on their knees every time. Maybe towards the end of the time, they cannot dispense what you expect. So I think I can leave that one and go to another source because of the time. Now, now what are the other sources? Levies. If you have a good rapport with the club, after with your PTA, there are some levies you can raise, but please do it suddenly, not every time. Because these children and these parents are going through tough times themselves. If you have, for example, inter-house court, okay, you can call the parents together. We want assistance. We want to go out because we want to develop the total child. Such thing you can maybe. You can even ask parents to go and buy what? Uniform. Am I right? And you, you will know how to make small money out of it. You can ask them to sponsor. These are some of the things. Don't let us go to the extent of saying, after paying the fees, you are still leaving them to pay 50,000, 100,000, and this. Some of them will pay for the first one, but they will be looking for other schools to move their children to. So we have to be careful. I want to say this. When you are starting your school, there are some that maybe your husband is so rich and wants to set up a school for the, for the child, I mean for the wife. That's not a problem. The man brings a load of money, isn't it? And drop it on you. I say, just go on. Maybe it's a politician, maybe it's working with a corporate, maybe it's a successful business man. That person cannot be compared with you that are taught for 20 years and say, I want to start what? A school. So when you are comparing yourselves, you have to understand the basis. But don't let me go into that. Let me. Another thing you can do is donation. Now, in this part of the world, we see private school as a business enterprise. Am I right? People believe that when you set up a school in the environment, you are supposed to tie the road. After all, you are making money. You are supposed to do so many things. Take pipe of water through them. Even when you are struggling, they don't know. When you borrow money from that, they don't know. They are only that you are making money. And good the thing. I remember when my wife started the school, and then people started visiting the place. She complained to me. I said, darling, I said, what is the problem? I said, do you know, those people are used to give 5,000 naira to when the child delivers. I mean, when the woman delivers a child. So they said, no, that's not my money. You got your school. The school that was borrowed, I mean, that was on loan. So, he said, I, that woman, I have to give her 10,000. Because when I give them 5,000, she said, no, 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 take your money back. That's not my money. And that is the, that's the way we have it in Nigeria. So, you now go back to the same people and say, they should come and give you donations. They say you are making what? Money. Do we need to give to somebody who has? Again. But we still have some things. You can still look for donors. There is a corporate social responsibility of some co corporates. I used to work in the bank. There are some banks that come out to say we want to assist in this area. But you must come up with programs. For example, if you have a program towards child learning disabilities, autistics, autism, I hope you understand it. Or you have something like a scholarship program for the poor indigent students. You have a program, something like that. You package it and you are able to present it to some of these banks or corporates or embassies. You may have some donations. Am I making any sense? But you have to be able to convince them that this may have impact on the environment, on the locality that you are in there. So if you do that, I have seen some schools that have been hurt even from some of these donations. 
church embassy just came up with something of this. I don't know how many of you looked into it. All they wanted you to do is to be able to let them know your business plan and what you intend to achieve. Read papers and look for some of these things. You can Google, you will see some of these things there. Another way of raising money, because this my thing is not working, but I was going to wrote it, so just listen to me. Chiki will be one time the mathematician professor. Anytime you get to school, you are to the University of Ibadan. The children, um, the students then, they pack books, written by TK, and then they will, you now told them, TK of this before you. Why are you now? Just listen. So I wrote that thing. You may be just go. Let me quickly go through some of the other sources. The other sources, uh, like the reason I mentioned to you, if your school has been in the system for long, you can have the alumni club. Some of them have gone through your school. My children went through Corona. If tomorrow there's something that they are doing in Corona school, there is a possibility that they will want to. They went through Green Spring. And I know my daughter will always say, my school, my school. If tomorrow they are able to get something, they will remember the school. If you invest in the children, the children will also watch. They invest in you in the in future. Now, but outside that one, other sources can be bank overdraft. Or, okay, before I go to bank overdraft, personal loan. Sometimes you have a situation before the school resumes. You need to get some things, and yet the fees have not started coming in. You can take donations, I'm sorry, personal loan from friends. All you need to assure them is to say, once the fees are collected, you do what? You will pay back. I'm just giving you some of the things you can do. Tips. It may not work for everybody, but for it to work for you, you can only try them once. If this time money comes in and you start giving them excuses, you go back the next time, they will not do anything for you. If you have a good rapport with your parents, you can collect fees in what? In advance. I hope you understand it. But don't go to PTA and be soliciting for fees in advance. Then you become a beggar. But there are some of them that are very close to you. There are some parents that are no more rich. They have the money. And you are very close to them. They can give you money. The only thing is that whatever promise you give them, always stand by the words. The promise. Now, outside that one, there's what you call bank overdraft. That is, if you have a current account with a bank, then you will go to that bank and the banking with you. Allow me to overdraw my account when necessary. And then you go into agreement with them. They allow you to overdraw your account. But before they will do that, they will look at your turnover. Oftentimes, I see many schools having so many accounts. When you have too many accounts, you are cheating yourself. If you concentrate on two or three banks, that will help you. They look at the turnover on your account and they can give you without any collateral. They know that at your next time, money will do what? Please be coming and they will be able to take their money. So sometimes rather than begging your friends, you can just go to their bank. You are going to pay what? Interest. But it's something that once you get money, then it refers back to credit. You have no problem. Okay. Another thing you can do is bank loan. Bank loan. Ah, what I just mentioned. Some of you say, oh, that, don't talk about that bank loan. But what can you do? Sometimes when you need money, you may need bank loan. Let me tell you, Dangote is the richest in Africa. Before I left banking, I knew how much he was owing the banking industry. When they tell you about the richest man in the world, they are only telling you about the assets. They don't tell you about what? Don't run away from loan if there is a need. Because you are using somebody's money to do the business. Imagine if you borrow 
10 years ago, you borrowed 100 million. Today, the same thing you used 10 years ago, 1 billion may not be able to do it now. Am I communicating? So sometimes you have to look at it, especially when you want to go into property development. But I will warn you, I was managing director of two banks in Nigeria. Even from my time, you always want to run away from schools. Because schools, when the fees are coming in, they are thinking of so many things. And unfortunately, some of them do not plan. The school is because to go. Some of them, that is where they want to go abroad. They provide dress. Want to travel. They want to buy a service. Do so many things. And we have some problems with that. And unfortunately, again, if you use the school as a collateral, you are in trouble as a bank. Because you need somebody who wants to run a school to buy the building from you as a bank. I hope you understand it. But so today, what most banks are doing is that if you want to borrow heavily from them, they will say, give us another property that is not the school building. If you can afford it. But let me tell you, some people have surplus. They keep it as deposit with the bank. You can go in there, borrow as long as your cash flow can do it. Can do it. Let me warn those of you who say, I want to borrow 100% to develop my structure. If you do it, in Nigeria, we don't have long-term loans. The best you can get in most banks today is a four-year tenor. One year to build, three years to repay. Imagine if you borrow 200 million. The question is that, and you are borrowing at 24 percent per month, which is two percent per what? Two percent per annum. If you borrow 200 million, two percent per annum, you are going to be paying four million as what? Interest every month. If you borrow 200 million at 24 percent, 24 percent is two percent per month. 2% of 200 million is 4 million. So 4 million per what? That is only the interest. So you have to be careful. Some of us have this bogus idea that I want five-story building. The whole entire year, I want it to be my school. You can do it. But ensure that at least you yourself can contribute not less than 40% of the fund. Okay? 40% of it, and then you borrow 60%. And then look at your cash flow. Cash flow is a projection. You may not achieve it. So you have to also look at it. If it doesn't work, what can I do? I know so many providers that have gone into high blood pressure because of you. I'm sorry, there is no way you can develop without borrowing. Especially if you don't have the money. Another way of doing it is to raise equity. Equity. What am I saying? If you are the owner of the school, you see whether you can raise more money and bring it to the school, or you want to call some of your friends to come and join us with you. Unlike loan, loan is repayable within a short time. Three years, four years. Am I right? Equity is not repayable within four years. But they must be sure that you are going to give them what? Returns for dividend. You have to look at it. If you are able to convince them, and let me tell you, some of us are always afraid. I would rather own it myself. It's better to own it yourself. But if you own a school that is not more than 25 million, 100%, and you own 50% of a school that is 100 million, you are richer by joining somebody. Am I communicating? There was a, a school that came from South Africa or princess. I don't know how many of you have been visited. And they were looking for a school to cooperate with. I hope my time is still my time. Okay. Now, so 
you can cooperate with such people and say, I still want to maintain 60% of the school and 40%. Because when you are co-owners, the pressure will be less. You can use some of these loans to repay, and some of this equity to repay the bank loans. Let me tell you, when banks want to give you loan, they are nice. When you hold them, that's when the problem starts. Let me leave you there. I know I saw a school somewhere. I won't tell you the area. I saw the inscription. This place, this school has been taken over by Amcom. Amcom. I hope you know the name of Amcom. Asset Management Corporation of Nigeria. That will not be your own person. As we are saying amen, let us also plan. Now, I will leave the other ones are this. There are other ways of making money. Some of you have very good hall. And there are many religious activities going on over the weekend. Am I right? The gym says a church will not be more than 10 minutes from your house. You can rent your hall to them. Okay? But again, don't let anything jeopardize the security of your world. Students. Now let me leave the other that sources of income so that I can rush through the rest because my other people are here. Now I have identified these various sources. There are some that I cannot mention now because of my time. Then you now need to do what you call budgeting. Some of you don't do budget. Budget is a list of your revenue. How much will come in? And then how much am I going to expend? Many of us, we know what we are going to expend. We don't know where the money is going to come from. Now, you are going to do that paragon. But I always encourage many schools to do them time by time. Look at what the revenue that is going to come in. You know the fees that will come in. You know the salary you are going to pay. If you rent the building, you are going to pay rent. You are going to run the school. The buses and all other things that you are going to do. You put all those expenses down. And then you meet with your head teacher. The two of you look at it. The senior management. It's not something that you can do alone. Carry them along. Let them see. Some of you operate without a budget. In Nigeria, many people are always proud towards the end of the month. Isn't it? You will see a young man walking like this. They are just collecting what? They are just collecting salary. But when you see people, if you want to enjoy your ride in Lagos, the middle of the month, towards the end of the month, because people are more sober. Am I communicating? And the reason why all these things are happening is that we don't plan. When money comes to us, that's when we say, whoa, my jayo will be job. You never follow me. I cannot keep myself. Let me enjoy myself. But you enjoy yourself at the expense of other things. I have to be among the weak. I'm a proprietress. I saw what that proprietress wore to the seminar we had last time. Listen, I was ashamed of myself. My friend even asked me, when last were you in New York? I couldn't tell you. Some of these things is what we spend money for. But again, when you are building, you have to understand that you are building. Budgeting. You have to list all the sources of revenue that is going to come that time. And you look at all the expenses. Then you look at if the expenses are more than the what? The income. Then start cutting down the what? Expenses. We have to do this. Let me warn so many proprietors or proprietor. We don't differentiate between the school's fund and our own fund. Your auntie will come to you. And what is the problem now? Please, you have to assist me. And what do I do? I want to rent a shop. 300,000. You take out of the school's... Uh, is that part of the budget? You have to be careful. Some of us, we spend out of it. So you have to look at your expenses. There are some things we prioritize. Salary of teachers are very, very worth. No matter what you do. Even when they come to you, 
It's because they don't have any other choice. They are working. And anybody who works at the altar must eat at the what? Some of us, we know where we send our, pay, our, our teachers to. We continue to do extra blessing because we are not paying them well. They get tired. But I don't want to say more about that. Budgeting is very, very important. I'm closing now. After the budget, then there's what we call management of the budget. You have to, before you spend, I mean, I go to the church, I'm a people in the church. Let me tell you, before we spend anything in our church, the finance man will ask whether it is in the world, in the budget. The first question you must ask yourself is, how much that budget for this? Somebody will come and tell you stories and do this. If you do this, if you do that, your school will do like this. And then you bring it in. It's out of your budget. You are already getting into trouble. When there is a deficit, let me tell you, whatever you budget for to spend, you will spend. But all the money will not come in. So you have to be careful. So you have to do what you call management of your budget. There must be a bosser in the school or an accountant. Let the person tell you. I was in the school last week. I said, let me see your payment voucher. The payment voucher. This one, was it authorized by the head of school? Yes, he said, show me the authorization. These are some of the things you need to do. You have to manage what you have very well. You will go there. You will become the likes of our Maria Corona. They don't, they don't sweat on the finances in their own case. <laughs> she said, really? But before you get there, you have to understand that when you plan to it takes few months to grow. Am I right? But when you plan to go, it is not the first four year, first year that you are going to reap. They will call you a farmer, but you have nothing to show for the first year, the second year, the third year, the fourth year. This is in the fifth year you become an investor. I hope you understand. So what do you eat within the first four years? If you start letting them show me to you that you are already a farmer in the first year when you have nothing to show and you are dancing to the music, Baba Farmer, Mama Farmer, you are, and then you are spraying, you are spraying out of nothing. I hope you understand. I am going to end it up here as I close that in managing it, you have to keep records. Keeping records. There must be an accountant in the school keeping what? Records. Please, don't spend money of the school without a payment voucher. Now, some of you, you can transfer. The proprietor, the proprietress, or the head, the head of school, who is the owner of the school, you just transfer. Then, you now ask an accountant to prepare the records for you. The accountant may have to depend on the bank statement. It's not right. The bank can make mistakes. In accounting, we have what we call bank reconciliation. You are supposed to prepare your own record outside that of the bank. And at the end of the month, you do what? You reconcile. But if you make your boss have to depend only on bank accounts, you are going to be in trouble. Keep ledgers. There are some softwares. When I was looking at the paper today, let me show you this one. This brochure, two minutes more, okay. There is one where software, okay. There's, there are some software that can do some of this you are answering for you. And then at the end of every time, you should be able to come up with profit and loss. Are you making a profit or you are making a what? A loss. Then you are going to come up with balance sheet, which is the financial position of the school. Am I communicating? Finally, they say my time is over and I'm going to close here. You must audit your books every year. Some of us, when we hear audit, we are, we are always thinking, why are you shaking? This is not your own school. There must be a chartered accountant auditing your school every year. They are going to look at your internal control system. They are going to look at whether somebody is defrauding you or not whether you are doing something properly and they are going to come up with what you call management letter things that will assist you so that you can do better these are some of the things you have to do in financial management i thank you very much for listening <laughs>